So I have very um, particular tastes when it comes to games. My interests are always just not aligned with other people's interests when it comes to gaming. For instance, my favorite video game genres of all time are rhythm games and visual novels. Assassin. Ah, oh, right. I totally forgot. The assassin. Assassin. Oh. <laughs> And it is extremely hard for me to get into any kind of shooter, first person shooter, third person shooter, or anything of the sort. More than anything though, I love indie games. I love when independent creators can develop games that can bring their true vision to life. Games that aren't just for making money, but games that can speak to the soul, transport you to a new world, open your eyes to a new experience, and most of all, are just plain unadulterated fun. Which is why I decided to compile my top 5 picks for indie games that need to be on your 2024 radar. And trust me when I say, you have never heard of at least one of these games. Imagine this, a game where you play as a fox, exploring a serene winter landscape with absolutely stunning visuals, abstract architecture, a hidden story beneath the surface, and being able to dash as a fire spirit. Wait, no, stop. This is not Spirit of the North. I mean, they do look kind of similar, but hold on. This game will soon exist, and it's called... This is the next game that should jump to the top of your wish list. This game looks like it fully embraces the magic of what a video game is capable of, taking you through a journey, discovering creatures beyond your imagination, to solve puzzles and explore ancient artifacts. You play as this little fox who can turn into a fire spirit of sorts, dashing through snowy environments and possessing seemingly weird remnants of a robotic society, with music that elicits a feeling of pure childhood, wonder, and awe. And I just gotta say, one look at this Kickstarter trailer and I was instantly captivated. The gameplay just looks so freaking magical and gorgeous and breathtaking. You can even explore this land with a friend! Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for this game. I'm not sure what kind of mysteries are going to be waiting for me, but boy, am I ready to seek them out myself. Also, you play as a fox. Like, hello? I'm pretty sure that just makes a game five times better no matter what it entails. Hashtag play tunic. Alright, hot take coming. You're not ready for this one. I couldn't get into Celeste. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm not really sure what it was. Something about the mix of the difficulty with the way that the game just seemed to go on forever, and the fact that I had seen a lot of it online already, it really turned me off, and I couldn't even beat the first level before shutting the game down and never really touching it again. I know if I just picked it back up and just committed to playing it more, I'd probably be hooked, but I'm not sure when that's going to happen. So imagine my shock when a Celeste-like with a spear as a climbing tool instantly captivated me and with no end in sight. This is Pokey Poke, and if you've been following this channel even for a bit, you'd probably know what this game is since I played it in a very recent video. In this game, you're equipped with a spear and you can stab, poke, and launch yourself through different obstacles. There's something so viscerally addicting about the gameplay. The way you drag the mouse around, clicking the button to stab it into a wall. It's such a tactile feeling. That just makes me want to keep trying and trying, even with how hard the challenges get. It's so euphoric. Every step of progress feels like a monumental moment we're celebrating. And it never stops being interesting with this variety of challenges and secrets to explore. There's a demo out right now. And I highly recommend checking this game out before it blows up. Because it will blow up. Realistically, I have no idea if this game is going to come out in 2024, but it will come out sometime in the future, and I'm so ready for the day it does. Like I said at the start, a category of games I really like is rhythm games. Which is funny considering all the rhythm games I don't like. <laughs> And that's due to one thing, and that's audiovisual feel. If I play a rhythm game, can listen to a song and remember the song, that's a pretty good rhythm game. But if I can listen to the song and remember the beats I input, to me that's where the art of a rhythm game can truly shine. Like for instance, just dance to do 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 do. 
This is because this is where the inputs are directly related and made in mind to the song's drive and feel. Rhythm Heaven does this perfectly, Elite Agents Flawless, Rhythm Doctor outstanding, and now... Rhythm Quest has 100% scratched that itch, given how every track in the game is original and made for the game. Its impeccable pixel art and chiptune soundtrack makes an absolute joy to play, and I'll forever remember playing the demo for this game and hearing this build up for the first time. It put the biggest grin on my face, one that didn't let drop until the final input. What's better than a one button rhythm game? Two buttons! And this game is just that, two buttons. Yet the complexity of what is possible with two buttons is limitless and infinitely more difficult than you could possibly imagine. This is a solo developed game and I cannot wait for Kirby's work to finally all pay off. It's gonna be awesome! I've always tried to get into Pokemon, but after Leaf Green on my Game Boy Advance, yes I've only played Leaf Green to the end, pathetically, I sort of felt it hard, I felt it very grindy and uninteresting. The strategy felt like it kinda barely existed and it just felt flat for me in a lot of ways. More importantly though, I just played for the cute Pokemon and I hated seeing them get hurt. Like you fight to the death until you nearly faint then revive them only to fight again, this feels like abuse. I feel like it would feel much better if it was merely a competitive sport, in which these creatures were playing where everyone was clearly having fun and no one was getting hurt. That's right, Beastie Ball is Pokemon Volleyball. I could literally stop there, and half of you would already be spamming the wishlist button on Steam, but there's way more than that. These creatures called Beasties are down for some competitive action, and your task is to guide them through a turn-based ultimate, ultimate volleyball, volleyball match. match. Take turns deciding what each Beastie is going to do, with a bunch of different types of moves like normal, support, effect moves, among many others, and gain the advantage by rising into the air and striking down the ball onto the court or right into the Beastie's face. This game hit me in a way Pokemon never did. There's just so many strategies and balances going on here that clearly show clear attention to game feel with the feelings of push and pull. For instance, you have three moves per turn, and you can move your beastie up to the front which does more damage, but that beastie will take more damage. Or you could target a beastie and knock them out, but you can also just slam the ball down where a beastie isn't and win that way. And different beasties have different shot types, different move sets. This is quite literally the only game I've ever played where I actually want to grind, because it's just that fun to engage with its system. The beastie designs are phenomenal, and there's so many more promised cute critters coming to this kooky game, and I'm just so ready for this game to come out to compete my way to the top of the ranks. Oh, and also they made Chicory a colorful tail, so uh, yeah, it's 100% gonna be good. If you follow this channel at all, you know exactly what number one is. Welcome to Bits and Bops. A rhythm minigame collection made by Rhythm Heaven fans for Rhythm Heaven fans. My favorite game of all time is uh, Tunic, but my second favorite game of all time is Rhythm Heaven, which was kind of a shame seeing how there's so few rhythm games like it. Games that rely on your sense of pulse and listening skills rather than pure visual audio reflex. That's why when I saw this game demo, I fell in love. From the beautiful 2D drawn graphics to its utterly bopping soundtrack to the hilarious antics that occur in between levels. This is literally all I've wanted my entire life. Just another game that could instill that same joy Rhythm Heaven did all those years ago. Over 20 rhythm games are planned for this bonanza of bopping beats and I'm positively befuddled at all the possibilities this game has to buffer and gets the number one bot in my 2024 games wishless. 
Hopefully you enjoyed this list and learned something along the way. Let me know some games that you're interested in seeing in 2024. I'm sure there's plenty I missed and I'm not even considering AAA titles. I'm absolutely gonna make a video on these games once they come out. So if some of them sound interesting to you, you would definitely want to skip to stay out. Blah, 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 blah. If some of them sound interesting to you, you would definitely want to stick around. And maybe press that subscribe button? Till then, Speed Yoshi, signing out.